Hey guys, as promised, I'm going to flip through my binder with the regulation station curriculum in it and show you what is inside. So um, here's a table of contents. You don't necessarily need to print this because if you're printing it, you don't really need the numbers because I don't put page numbers on every single page um, because that would be distracting, especially on a printable poster. You don't really need a page number, but um, you can still keep it in here so you know what is included for each lesson. Um, these are just some extra activities that I kept out for a moment. Here's just a little introduction about what the students are going to be able to do as a result of um, this instruction. If you have the whole curriculum, it includes the skills checklist. You can have um, a teacher fill it out, you can have a parent fill it out. Um, this is going to be your pre and post test. Okay, so now we're going to get into the lesson. So each lesson, you've got your objective up here, you've got a scripted outline. Um, we've got a materials list, your ask a standards alignment, and then what kind of data you'll be collecting. And then we've got a pretest and a post test. So I print these two sided so that I can just cut them into quarters and the pretest and the post test are on the same page. They just flip them over. So for my students that aren't reading yet, um, what I'll do before I go in is I just highlight pretest on every single one of them. So then I can just say, make sure you're on the side with the yellow highlight or something like that. Um, just to make sure that they're on the right side. So the goal of this lesson is just that they're familiar with emotions. So let me flip back to, yeah, lesson one is just what are emotions. So they're going to learn some emotion words. Now there's a story that goes along with this. It's a PowerPoint story about the feelings train. And these are just puzzles. I haven't cut them out or laminated them yet. But um, you can also do this review portion on the PowerPoint, but I have puzzles if you want to make it more hands-on. So these are just little scenes from the story. And so it says, how did the feelings train feel when he chugged by the seaside and saw the children playing? It's happy. So they're just matching it up. It's just a way to talk about the feelings and why he felt that way and at what point in the story he felt that way. So you can see there's a bunch of different feelings introduced in this story. So you've got happy, calm, scared, joyful, brave, and defeated, another happy, surprised, angry, and calm. Okay, so then um, what they're gonna do after reading the story and reviewing that, um, that's just kind of building their emotional vocabulary. There are a bunch of these pages like this. So this train feels worried. Some reasons people might feel worried are, they can draw a picture or write. So it's just gonna depend on your students, their developmental level. You can offer both options depending on what they prefer. So you're just gonna draw some reasons that people might feel worried. And then they're scared, happy, sad, surprised, angry and embarrassed. Okay, now all of the lessons in this unit have a closing activity that's going to teach the students a calming strategy. Um, so to start, this one is train breathing. So you're breathing in through your nose, circling your arms like a train's crankshaft. That's this part right here that goes around, like chug, chug, chug. Okay, so you're gonna count to five, and then you're gonna breathe out through your mouth, imagining your breath rising up into the air like steam from a train, and then you're gonna count to seven. So it's just controlled breathing, but just using the train concept to get them excited. So lesson two, we're sticking with the emotion theme, but this one is about listening to my body. So this is how do I recognize emotions? How do I know that I'm feeling that way? What clues is my body telling me? So same format as the other lesson. This one we've got our pretest, post test. So um, again, we're just checking to see um, can they name emotions? How do they know that they're feeling that way? So this one, they can draw a face or they can write in the word. And these are front and back again. Um, okay, so this, there's a, again, a PowerPoint story to go along with this one. And then um, there are some slides to talk about how you can recognize emotions. And these are the clues that I give the students. So you can pay attention to your heart, notice how fast it's beating, pay attention to your breathing, and you can notice your muscles, are they feeling tense? And you can notice your thoughts. So those are the four little um, <clears throat> things that they're gonna be looking into. So this one, we're doing another, this is the closing activity. I put that in there to save space, I think. So anyway, I'll show you this first. So these, I've got, I think, 25 of these in here. And I think what I'm gonna do is take them out and I'm gonna bind them with this on the front. So basically what these are, um, there's one for all the emotions. And so this first little section describes the body sensations for the emotion. So when I feel angry, my face might be red, my teeth are clenched. And then 
the middle section or the second section is going to describe what people might want when they feel that way. So sometimes when I feel angry, I want to yell or squeeze a stress ball. I may want to do push-ups or something else to get my energy and tension out. And then the last section is what reasons why people might feel that way. So I feel angry when things aren't fair, when someone hurts me, or when someone lies to me. And then when do you feel angry? So there's one of these for all of the emotions that are included. So I, there's 25 or 27, something like that. And then... Um, what the students are going to do is um, get a blank one of these. They're going to draw a face on there and describe why they feel that way or when they feel that way, how they know, that kind of stuff. And then this is our closing activity. It's another train breathing. So in through your nose, counting to five. And then when you exhale this time, instead of counting to seven, you're going to say, ch, ch, chew. Okay, so it's just another train thing that they can get excited about. Okay. Um, lesson three, we're going to be talking all about rules and expectations. So what behaviors are expected um, while we are at school? What are people um, expecting me to do to keep everybody safe? So with all of these lessons, there's a PowerPoint story about the feelings train. So that's included too. Um, that's, I'm not showing you that right now, obviously, because it's not in the binder because it's on PowerPoint. But for this one, um, there are all of these little cards um, and there are two options for these that I included. So these say great choice, not a great choice. The other one, it just has a thumbs up and a thumbs down on the little railroad signs, but they're basically going to be looking at all these cards and just clipping whether they think it's a great choice or not a great choice. And, um, it's going to compare like situationally appropriate behavior. So eating during lunch, obviously that's a great choice. There's another one that says like playing during lunch. So that's not a great choice, but it just compares like, um, running outside is okay, running in the library not okay, that kind of thing. Um, and so for our pretest post test on this one, it shows somebody yelling and it says, when is this action okay to do? So they can write or draw a picture. It's okay to yell like when you're at a sporting event. They might draw like being at their brother's baseball game or something. And then when is this action not okay to do? In the lunchroom, in the classroom, something like that. So it's just showing that they can differentiate um, when a behavior might be appropriate and when it's not appropriate. And then I've got all of these, there are um, I think there's eight of them, six or eight of them, and it just has a kid in the middle and they're gonna draw a scene around showing when it is appropriate. And then they will talk in small groups about um, a time when it would not be appropriate, but they'll just share it with everybody. All right, and now this closing activity is conductor breathing. So you breathe in through your nose, pumping your arm three times like you're pulling the train whistle. Breathe out through your mouth, whistling like the train. All right, good choices given emotion. So this is um, all about making good choices even when you have big emotions. Um, again, there's a PowerPoint story for this one. Um, Pre-test, post-test, I'll give you a little closer look at this one. So Kylie feels angry because Victor knocked over her block tower. She picks up a block and throws it at Victor. Obviously not a great choice given that emotion. Uh, Beto feels angry because Miles laughed at his drawing. He goes to another table and controls his breathing. Great choice. Um, and there is a PowerPoint, there's not like a lot of printed material for this one because there's a PowerPoint activity where they're going to be up and moving um, to talk about good choices given emotion. So um, basically they'll, it's kind of like a musical chairs activity. They will um, be up out of their seats and moving around and then a certain student gets called on. This one actually, this is the behavior one, right? Yeah. So this story has kind of a choose your own outcome story. So while you're reading the PowerPoint, you can ask the students like what choice the train should make and then you'll click it and it'll show like what happens if he makes that choice. So it's pretty fun. It's really engaging. This one is a grounding activity. This is the closing exercise for this one. Um, so they're going to tap their right hand on their left shoulder, tap your left hand on your right shoulder, making a railroad cross with your arms and then squeeze yourself. So it's like a tap, tap, squeeze grounding activity. All right, lesson five. This one is about perspective taking, so understanding how other people are feeling. Again, another PowerPoint story to go along with this one. And then the practice activity for this, there's a bunch of these clip cards and they have scenarios on them. There are two options for this one too that you can pick from depending on your students. Um, one set has a scenario written on it or typed on it. Um, if your students aren't reading yet, you can use the other set of cards. It's just gonna have the picture and it'll have an arrow pointing to one of the kids. And then they're gonna clip the train that best shows how the person is feeling. And let's see, the closing activity, let me just turn my binder for this one, is just this breathing activity. You're gonna give them all a ticket for the feeling train. They'll start on the star, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And then they can keep that in their desks too. Oh, and this is the pretest post test for this. So. Um, they're just reading a scenario, looking at the picture, and then um, circling the emoji that best shows how the person is feeling. 
So this one is expanding their, their um, ideas about thinking not just about their own feelings, but thinking about other people too, and how um, situations might affect other people. So this section, okay, so for lesson six and seven, it's a two-part series on calming strategies. So depending on how much time you have, you're probably gonna do this across two lessons. If for some reason you had like a huge block of time, like an hour with your students, you could do it all in once, but I really think it should be broken up. So for each lesson for the calming strategies, there are four centers that your students are gonna rotate through. And um, yeah, so there's one pre-test, post-test for lesson six and seven, it goes together. So basically it has emotions on this side, then they can write or draw something that they can do to help themselves feel calm when they feel that way. So before you do this, they may not know. They may not know a positive coping strategy that they could use, but by the end, hopefully they will be able to fill something in. So for these centers, um, center number one, I've got all these labels in here. Let's see if I can pull them out. Okay, so for center number one, they're gonna be doing um, kind of like brain puzzles. There are some mazes in there, and I will flip to show you those in a second. Some mazes that they can do, and if you wanted to include like a Rubik's Cube or something like that, you can include that too. Um, then we've got some mandala coloring for the second um, center. And then um, at center three, you're gonna include some breathing tools. So you could include like a Hoberman sphere, some pinwheels, bubbles, or you could use um, cards like these. Um, if you don't have that material on hand, you can just print some breathing guides. So this one is um, square breathing, and then this one is the figure eight breathing. Okay, let's see. And then for center number four, um, they're gonna come up with some affirmations that they can say to help themselves feel calm, and it looks like this. So um, it's just a little foldable that they can keep with them. So I, in the conductor of my feelings train and then it opens up and each of the cargo cars has an affirmation in it that they can say we can keep those okay let me see okay so these are the mandala coloring pages there are i think there's like four or five of these so the mandalas are on the train wheels you know i like to stick with a theme and then this is one of the mazes that I have. This is level one. I included three levels, so this is like a pretty simple maze, and then they just get harder with each level. Now this is another um, thing that's included at the first center, the um, puzzle center. So these are um, just untangles, and they're matching the conductor kids to their favorite calming strategy tool. So it's purposeful. Um, this one is gonna be matched up with a stress ball. Then we've got headphones, a slinky, a yoga mat, and a journal. And there's two of those. So on the back, this one has pinwheel, um, Rubik's Cube, bubbles, and stuffed animals. Okay, so that is the first set of calming strategy centers. This is the second set. And remember, the pre-test, post-test is for um, both of these lessons together. Let's see if I can pull these out. Okay, here we go. So at this one, so I labeled these one through eight. Um, but I also included some blank labels if you want to renumber them because um, I know not everybody's going to want to do them in the same order and that's fine. So this one you're going to give your kids just like a bucket of sensory tools that they can play with and see which one they like to help them feel calm. Like some kids really like mermaid or sequin pillows but other kids don't like the feel of them. So you just have a bunch of different things that they can explore. Um, this one, um, this is going to be an energy exerter. So there are two options for this one. You can do like a roll and exercise called it a roll to release. So roll a one, do two and jumping jacks, whatever. And then there's also this one, if you don't wanna do it like that, you can just have a choice board and they can just pick an exercise and try it out. It's a little less pressure with that one. Um, this one, number seven, is a stretching or yoga center. I didn't actually put the word yoga on here. I know a lot of you aren't allowed to say that at school, which is super unfortunate, but um, I just put focus on your strength. So there are six poses and um, affirmations that they can say with each one. That's number seven. And then finally, number eight, um, this is a journaling one. So I have some journal pages. I don't think I've printed them yet or they might be behind one of these pages, but um, it's just journaling about feelings. And then I do have some sentence starters here too for your students who want those. So just some sentence starters to help them write about their feelings. And then you can do this a couple different ways if you want you can have these cards at each center so they can collect one each time they go to a center or you can just give them to them all at the end put them on a little ring there's a black and white one if they want to color theirs too um, but it just has a little reminder of all of the calming strategies that they practiced through all of the eight centers 
And I like to have these just on a ring that I can hang in my room too. Okay, so let's look at number lesson eight. So this one is all about problem size. So the language that I use in this is big deal, little deal. And I only use two just because this is for primary students and I don't want them to have to um, differentiate between several different levels of problems like I do for my older students. But this one is just big deal, little deal. Um, there is a PowerPoint story about this one and then there's a sorting activity. So you can do this two ways. There's one um, PowerPoint activity where you can have your students do, um, like I mentioned before, kind of a musical chair style activity where they're moving around the circle and then depending on where the, they're sitting when the music stops, you call a student to identify whether it's a big deal or a little deal. Or you can um, use these like paper lunch bags and then there are um, cards that are just big deal or little deal. This is the bag where, you're, where you store all the cards and then there's one bag that's labeled big deal, one labeled little deal. They can just sort them in there. And then this is our pre-test, post-test, big deal, little deal. And then for each of these scenarios that's in here, there's a discussion guide. So this is situation and then this kind of says what it is and why it's a big deal or a little deal. And then this is just a handout that the students can do. I've got an example in here. This is pretty quick because on this one, what they're doing is they're coloring the big deals and they're crossing out the little deals. So there's only, what, four big deals on here. Um, we've got, you know, two dangerous situations, somebody's hurting you. And then this one, um, it depends on how you want to teach it, but the way that I teach it is if they've tried to solve the problem themselves um, multiple times and somebody's bothering them or not, not leaving them alone, then it's okay to go to an adult, ask for help, um, and that's what's going on in this situation. But it's pretty quick because they're only really coloring for and Xing out the rest of them. Yeah, and those are just my blank copies back here. Got some visuals for this one too. I made three different ones just depending on the students. So this one, um, I've just got some questions for them to ask to determine whether it's a big deal or a little deal. This one has some actual um, examples. So you little deals you can solve yourself, might be an accident, you can ignore it. You can keep doing what you need to do. The big deals are someone is hurt or in danger, you already tried to solve it yourself, you need help from adult or there's an emergency. And then this one, um, instead of having pictures, it's just written out. Okay, and now the, the closing activity for this one is a calming mantra. So it's just teaching students to repeat something to themselves out loud or in their mind to help them feel calm. This one is, this is a little deal. I won't get derailed by a little deal. I'm in control of my actions. You can pick any part of that or all of that. Um, now lesson nine, this is all about simple solutions. So this is when they have a little deal problem, um, they can solve themselves. So these are some positive ways to deal with it. So like those previous lessons where I showed you the pretest, Somebody knocked over your block tower. Throwing a block at them is not a positive way to deal with that little solution or that little deal. But this lesson, they're going to learn positive ways to deal with it. Again, PowerPoint story to go with it. And then there are some scenarios on the PowerPoint. You can give each of your students one of these. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, give each of your students one of these clip cards and a clothespin or a binder clip. Show the scenario, have them clip it, hold it up. They can compare in their small groups. This is your pretest, post-test. How are you going to handle it? This is a visual aid. These are all the ways they can handle it. Ask for help, choose something else, do it together, ignore, share your feelings, take turns, invite somebody else to join you, or take a break. And then this is our closing activity for this one um, called the Problem Solving Artist. So if you have a problem, you draw a picture of yourself solving the problem and think about what tools you need, what special skills you might need, and then visualize it. Sit quietly and visualize yourself actually using the tools and solving your problem. All right, this is the final lesson, lesson 10. This is where they're gonna synthesize all of those skills that they have learned in all the other lessons. So for this, there are two options for activity. You can break this up into two lessons if you want. So the first option for the activities are centers. There are four centers where they're gonna isolate each skill that they've learned. And then there's a whole group activity where they're gonna synthesize all of the skills. So the first center, it's all about um, identifying calming strategies for emotions. I'll pull out the materials in just a second. Um, but center two is about um, labeling their feelings. Center three is thinking about big deal or little deal. And center four is identifying positive solutions. So let me see. This is kind of the step-by-step -step synthesis of skills. Use a calming strategy, think about your feelings, think about the problem size, and then choose a solution. <coughs> So this is your pretest, post test. Um, there's a, a problem. Identify the calming strategy. 
label your feeling, identify little deal, big deal, and then choose a solution. And there's two for each on pretest and post test. Now this is for the whole group activity. So I included um, some slides in the PowerPoint to um, that go after the story. And um, basically what you'll do is you'll put these on a seat. So there's four of them. Um, number one, calm. Number two, think. Number two, think. And number three, choose. So it's the same one, two, three. But there are two, think, because you're thinking about feelings and thinking about problem size. And um, you arrange these in the seats. Students rotate. You show a um, strategy or you show a problem. The student in the number one seat will identify what comic strategy they would use. The student in number two would label the feelings they would have. The student in this one will um, identify whether it's a little deal, big deal. The student in this seat will choose a positive solution. So let me pull out all of this material. This is for the centers. If you choose to do the centers instead. If you don't have time to do two lessons, that's totally fine. Just pick which one works best for your students. So at center one, they're gonna make one of these. So you're gonna give them everything they need to make this. It's just a little spinny wheel. So my calming strategy will, they can identify a feeling. So when I feel annoyed, I can control my breathing. And both parts of these spin. Oops, it's hard to do one-handed. Both parts of these spin and you can change the feeling and you can change the calming strategy too. So you're gonna make one of these to keep. In the second center, they're gonna identify their feelings. So you can make these little cards and you can just make like four of them or however many students are in the center to leave there. Or you can make one um, for them to keep. I don't think they really need to have one of these though. So they're gonna look at these situations and they're just gonna clip how they feel and then talk about it in their groups. All right, at center three, oh, these are the center labels. Let me see, pull out number three. So um, these, center three is big deal or little deal. And there are these clip cards for those. So they look at the situation and then they're gonna clip whether it's a big deal or a little deal. And then in center four, what positive solution will you choose? Now at this center, they're gonna get a stack of cards with the exact same pictures on them, but it's just gonna say, what solution would you choose? This is just so that they can kind of transfer like, okay, that's how I felt in that situation and this is how I would handle it. And um, for that, you're gonna have these problem solving wheels that they can use. And you really only need like four of these. You can make one of these for them to keep if you want, um, but you really only need like four or five for the center. And then they'll show, like a student will draw a card and then everybody will rotate and say, this is what I would do to solve that problem. And then they can, com can compare their answers. So that's just kind of a culminating activity to put all of their skills together that they've learned in all of the lessons. And then I have this, these are bookmarks that you can give the students to remind them, calm, think, and choose. This is the Calm Corner activity um, folder. If you wanna have one of these in your office or in the classroom, they can, there's instructions on the front, um, but if your students aren't reading it, they can just open and do it. They identify their feeling, just pick one, put it up here, and then they pick calming strategies that they can use. I left space for up to three. And then they can try that. And then on the back, they've got the figure eight breathing that they can try if they want to use it. And then um, some stretches or yoga poses that they can do with affirmations. So that is everything that's in here. Let's see. There are a couple of other games. I haven't printed the bingo one yet, but there is an I have who has. If you haven't played that before, basically you just deal out all the cards. You pick any student to start and they'll say, I have annoyed who has confused. And then whoever has the card with confused on top is gonna say, I have confused, who has, whatever, whatever's on the bottom. It's just a way to build emotional vocabulary and help them recognize facial expressions. All right, so that's everything that's in there. If you stuck with me for this long, thank you. Um, I hope that you enjoyed getting a closer look and let me know if you have any questions about it. I'll talk to you soon.